welcome back everybody so let's learn about ritual and how that ties into our study of religion so the first thing we're going to do is define the term ritual and then take a look at some examples so you'll notice that the definition of a ritual is any kind of formal regularized behavior that is performed in accordance with specific occasions or condition and it can be both secular and religious and if you remember secular what that term means it's something that is removed from the dominance of religion and then our little asterisk that these rituals can include symbolic importance beyond the action itself and what that means is that these rituals mean something deeper than just the act itself okay so now let's look at some more and reflect upon the definition of ritual right so it's formal regularized behavior what does that mean that means is that even before you start the ritual you start to undergo it you know what you're going to do because others have done it so in other words if you've never been married before and marriage would be an example of a ritual as we'll see in just a moment you know what happens when people are married right so it's formal it's regularized and these rituals are done with certain occasions or conditions in our lives and we'll talk more about what these certain occasions conditions could mark so some different examples graduation that is one of the best examples of a ritual so if we think about a graduation and reflect back upon the definition what happens when we graduate you dress up you wear certain clothing right the robe and then the mortar cap with the little tassel right and we act and behave in a certain way isn't that cool yeah likewise with with marriage our dress changes our behavior changes same thing with baptism now a lot of people they look at the next one family dinner and they go wow yeah family dinners are a ritual right everybody sits down at table together the blessing is said we say grace and then go through and whether it's a formal family dinner say for example like Thanksgiving or just an ordinary you know Tuesday or Thursday night and then you talk about your day and those family dinners right they follow a set pattern almost like a guideline the same go through and we do those same things over and over again and many people develop their own personal rituals as we go through life so looking at this list you'll see that graduation would be a secular ritual in other words high school graduation is not part of religion marriage is both secular as well as religious baptism just religious family dinner would be secular although there are certain dinners certain meals that are religious and then personal rituals could be both secular and or religious it would depend upon what that ritual is that you've developed and its meaning that you have attached to it so a next question to ask would be why do we have these rituals well they help us to express abstract ideas right so if we look at the top visual that's the marriage ceremony right that's an important ritual and that's the man putting the ring upon his wife's finger the ring itself is a symbol that's an abstract idea marriage 
is an abstract idea, right? The, the binding together in union of a man and a woman. The second bullet point creates a sense of community. Singing, standing for the national anthem, that is a ritual. When you were in grade school and middle school and high school, saying the Pledge of Allegiance, that is a ritual. We have those rituals because it helps to create a sense of community. It helps us to make become Americans. And then the, the bottom ritual, this is a Muslim man who is going through his prayers. And this is the third bullet point. It helps us to gain a full sense of being in a right relationship with the ultimate. So this is why we do these rituals. So what are some different types of rituals? Two primary types are commemorations and holidays. And people have created commemorations and holidays because they help us to recognize legendary or historical events. And when we go through these commemorations and these holidays, in part we reenact certain elements of the actual event to recreate them for the participant. So some different examples would be Christmas, right? So you might be thinking, well, how, when I celebrate Christmas with my family, how am I, am I reenacting the birth of Jesus of Nazareth? Because um, no one's really giving birth during Christmas. But this is why people today give presents. This is the gift-giving tradition harkens back to the Magi coming to visit the baby Jesus and bringing their gifts. That's why people today, Christians today, give gifts during Christmas. July 4th. You might notice in that middle visual, fireworks. Why do we always shoot off fireworks on July 4th? Well, we're recreating, we're reenacting the cannon fire that was part of America's independence, which is the top visual. So that's the connection between the past and the present. And then the bottom visual, this is the Jewish ritual of the Seder meal, which is reenacting and recreating Passover meal, which we get all the we we have to go all the way back to the Exodus experience. So these seasonal rituals what they help us to do is they help us to connect to our pre-modern past. In other words, we're in the global age before global was modern and before the modern was pre-modern. So we have to go all the way back to our pre-modern past and when everybody was a farmer and we relied upon agriculture. And the examples here are Passover and Easter which both take place in the spring. They help the participants to mark when to plant. And then an example in America of a secular seasonal ritual is Thanksgiving. That's when way back in the everybody was farmer. Thanksgiving, all of the crops had been harvested and everything had been put into storage. So what would you do? you would celebrate by having a really big meal. Wow. So, we'll go ahead and stop here. We're hitting the test. So we'll continue to talk about rituals in the next lecture.